Hey guys, what is up? Super K Man Rocks here, and we are here for my LEC Winter Split Finals overview and analysis. We are already here, the end of the first split in the LEC. Of course, the format change means that things are going real quick, and we get our Winter Split Finals this week. Obviously, it happened yesterday, and so going over this a little bit later than I think some other content creators, but I hope you guys are still interested in my analysis. I'm going to be going over all games individually. That's either three to five games individually. I'll try to keep some anonymity just in case uh, there are people who haven't seen who won the series yet. It would be a little bit surprising, but just in case there isn't, then I'm going to keep some anonymity as to who wins here. But of course, Really excited to talk about the series. Before we jump into it, let me know down in the comments section below. Who'd you think was going to win? Did you have G2? Did you have Mad? How did you think was th this was going to go? Did you think it was going to be a blowout? Did you think it was going to be close? I love to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions. And of course, also, you know, I'll ask this again at the end of the video. But let me know who you thought player of the series was. Who was your finals MVP for the winter split in 2023? But... With all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the preview for our finals of G2 Esports versus Mad Lions. A familiar matchup to those who may have been watching for quite a while. I say quite a while, over a year, right? Because this was the finals matchup, both splits in 2021. And so definitely getting back to a little bit more of, you know, the a year ago, uh, not, not so much last year, but the year before that's meta of G2 and Mad just kind of dominating the EU scene and being the two best teams with Koi slash Rogue being a distant third. Unfortunately, no Fnatic this time around in the top four, but uh, G2 and Mad definitely making it look easy getting to this point. G2 just looks so much better than everybody that they've played up until this point. It just doesn't feel all that fair. They ended up finishing the regular season in fourth place only because it's G2. They take some regular season games not that seriously, and that's just what's going to happen. But for the most part, it feels like they can beat anybody that they want to beat. And then Mad Lions actually was really good in the regular season, ended up finishing in second place. Didn't have the best of Group Bs, ended up losing that series to G2, and uh, didn't look all that good doing it, that best of three, but was able to bounce back, was able to end up beating, I believe it was Astralis to make their way here, and then SK, and then of course Koi to end up making their way to this final spot. Mad Lions on a big win streak right now. G2 obviously also on a win streak, but Mad having done it this weekend. Remember, G2's win over Koi was last weekend. Every single one of Mad's series was this weekend. So they have a ton of momentum. They have a ton of, I guess you could say, hype around this team right now. And we're going to see if that's going to pay off. If you don't remember my prediction from the previous video, from the semifinals video, I had predicted G2 in four, and my two-game spread was G2 and four, G2 and three, and so that was my prediction. I think they should have this in the bag, just like they did against them in the group. I just think G2 is clearly the best team in the LEC right now, but we're going to go ahead and see if Mad Lions can prove me wrong. Of course, starting off with game number one, and game number one was a G2 win. G2 was able to take that first game of the series, and they looked really dominant doing it. I mean, this was a G2 win basically from moment one. There were a couple of plays, maybe really just one play uh, that Mad Lions made that made me think, oh, maybe this game will be relatively close. And then from that point onwards, the game was, relatively speaking, over. Caps and Yike have a really strong outplay early on into the game. Uh, Elioia comes mid, tries to get him with Niski. Caps has to kite down away from his jungler, but oops, Sapling's there. It's able to hit Niski. You turn and you get the first blood. All of a sudden, Cassio is really strong, and then all of a sudden we're seeing some plays in the top lane. We're seeing Yike go top, trying to get this Kled ahead. You're able to catch Chasey. There's a kill for top lane. So now both of your solo laners are accelerated. They both have kills, and they both have major advantages in their lane, and that's a really strong point of contention for G2. I mean, Broken Blade and Caps are the lone members from this last year's team, and obviously two of the more feast or famine snowball players in the league. You do not want to let them get ahead because they are just going to beat you. Broken Blade and Caps are just simply too mechanically good to give these kinds of advantages to. Now, Mad, for their credit, actually fought back relatively well. They had a really good dragon fight over the first dragon of the game. However, from that point onwards, even though they're only down like 1k gold, it is G2 owning the map. It is G2 owning every bit of macro the rest of the game. Broken Blade ends up getting a solo kill on Chasey. Yike and Caps are permanently invading El Yoya in the jungle, making his life a living hell. And there really is no point left in the game for Mad to actually try and trade and to, for Mad to actually try and fight. G2 just controls every bit of action. Caps gets super fed on this Cassio, thanks to Yike, thanks to Broken Blade, 
And then from that point in the game, it's just, you know, mad throwing shit at the wall, seeing what sticks. They try a death push, and they all die. They try to force a team fight around their own nexus, and they all die. Like, there really is no positives left for Mad Lions, and it's just G2 from that moment onwards. When you're looking at G2, obviously, you gotta look at Caps first and foremost in this series. He's gonna get player of the game for game number one. Caps in the finals has always been a little bit of a different beast. When the games matter, Caps really steps up. He gets to play hyper carry like Cassio in the mid lane, which I think is awesome. Really like this adaptation for game number one here of just putting Caps on something that can take a lot of resources and dominate. It's really not the kind of direction that they've been going all year long. Yike is really like to go bot lane early in games. He's like to get Hans and Mickey ahead. Obviously, Bot lane's been super contentious, I would say, over the course of the year. It's probably the most impactful role in the game right now, at least for pro play. So I can definitely understand why G2 over the years so far has been a little bit more willing to give resources to maybe the players that are new to the team, to the role that is maybe a little bit more important. But it's the finals. You got to play through your best player and your best player is Caps. He's able to get that first blood, not really doing a good job of being able to avoid El Yoya in that dragon fight, but outside of that, I mean, Caps just starts snowballing the game out of control. We all know how dangerous Cassiopeia can be once she gets super online, and that's what happened to Caps in this game. Very deserving player of the game. His positioning, his damage, his aggressiveness, his macro, everything was there for him. He looked like the best player in the league with this kind of performance. Also got to shout out Yike. He was everywhere he needed to be in this series. Obviously, Yike has been really good over the course of the year so far. I think me and a lot of other people see him as the best performing jungler in the LEC so far in 2023, which is a really good sign, but this was another really good performance. He's not going into some schmuck in the jungle. El Yoya is maybe the best jungler in the league talent-wise, so to see Yike just kind of control the map and especially be able to take an advantage that his team was able to generate and use that to really shut off the enemy jungler. It's just really impressive stuff. That stuff you want to see out of El Yoya. That stuff you expect to see out of Yankos. But to see it out of Yike, like, it's just really, really good to see that a young player who doesn't have a ton of experience at this level be able to pull that off. And then Broken Blade just dominated the top lane matchup. He obliterated Chasey here. Obviously, Mad has been really pro to going to this Jace, you know, Gragas, like, double flex. This time it's a triple flex because they actually give the Gragas to El Yoya in the jungle and they go for the Victor in the mid lane, which is an interesting transition there, but Chasey getting destroyed in the top lane on this chase. This has been a huge pick for Mad Lions over the course of their year so far, and unfortunately, G2 had the counter with Kled in the top lane here. It absolutely wrecked. Broken Blade obviously very familiar with playing a really aggressive matchup into Jace, and he executed on it at a really, really high level, so credit to them. Hans and Mickey were fine. They didn't necessarily have any sort of pressure in this game, but they didn't need to. They were the weak side, and they played it well. Honestly, I really liked seeing G2 be able to come out here and play to top side of the map, because they really haven't done it all that much over the course of 2023. I would say Broken Blade has mostly been weak side for G2 in 2023, but credit to this team, because they wanted to play to Caps, they wanted to play to Broken Blade, Hans and Mickey played their roles pretty expertly here, and Yike was able to facilitate everything. G2 was basically perfect in this one. As for Mad on the other side... Not a good start to the not a good start to the series at all. I would say uh, you picked a lot of the things that you feel comfortable with. You have Karzi on a scaling bot laner, Hilly on someone who can pressure in lane, but also you know try to make proactive plays towards the mid game. You have Oyoya on the Gragas who is there to facilitate Niski on a control mage that can move around the map and Chasey on his signature Jace pick. It's not even the worst draft of all time. I would have liked maybe to have Niski on something a little bit more proactive in the mid lane, something that can make a little bit more plays, especially into something like the Casio, but. Victor works, I guess. It's a relatively decent in-lane matchup. It's supposed to do well in the 1v1, but I just feel like it takes away from a lot of the strengths that Niski has offered over the years so far. So, I, I don't know. That's the only negative I can say about draft. I think the rest was just playing it poorly. Like, El Yoya got completely out-jungled in the mid-game, and that the game basically completely fell apart from that. Chasey just wasn't nearly as good in the top lane, even though he got counterpicked here by the Kled. And then the Victor pick just didn't accomplish anything. You really needed your bot lane to step up, and they were also quote-unquote weak side. El Yoya really didn't spend a lot of time bot lane to try and get the Sivir online, to try to make this late game any easier. And so, I would just say a lot of mistakes made by Mad Lions. Chasey's gonna get my dud of the game here, purely because he lost 1v1, I would think, harder than any anybody in the entire game, but very realistically, you could give this to El Yoya, who just made some poor decisions. He invested a ton into this victor trying to shut down the Cassio, when that just was never really going to happen, and in fact, it just got the Cassio more ahead. He didn't invest at all into this bot lane when you have a Sivir, and you have a team fight comp. You've got the victor, you've got the Gragas. Look at the enemy team, like, they're going to want to split push here. You've got the Kled in the top lane. You're going to be able to find numbers advantages and ways to be able to win in the late game if this Sivir can get really strong, but you didn't want to play for her in 
the early game. I understand your bot lane hasn't exactly been the strength of your team over the course of the year so far, but this team comp really necessitates Sivir getting online, and unfortunately, you just didn't want to play for that. Um, and so Mad Lions definitely with some questionable decisions. Chasey and Elioia definitely not stepping up. Niski looking way worse than Caps. Karzi and Hilly not getting any pressure, and also losing the 2v2 is, is pretty bad, and... There's really just not a lot of positives to take away. I think Mad's really going to have to show me something in Game 2 for me to feel comfortable at all saying they have a chance in this series because Game 1 was just not good. As for G2, just keep it up. I mean, you picked uh, not a crazy comp because this is at least, like, understandable, but certainly some picks that I don't think Mad Lions was necessarily prepping for in Game 1. The Kled, the Casio... You can pull out anything. This G2 team has really shown that you can basically play anything at their level, and they're going to be able to win with it. They're very similar to a team like T1 in that way, where they're just so much better than everybody else that they're playing against right now that they can play basically anything, and they can play basically any style, and they're going to be able to win with it. I'm not sure if that's going to translate into an entire series, but... For G2's sake, I'm I'm hoping it does. Um, but we're going to have to see. Game number two, incredibly crucial here. You cannot go down 0-2 against G2. That is a death sentence. Having to win three games in a row against G2 Esports is just not a very likely scenario. So this is a must win for Mad Lions. But are they going to be able to win it? Or is G2 going to be able to put a stranglehold on the series? Well, the winner of game number two was... G2 Esports, they are able to take game number two here and generate a 2-0 series lead here. A very, very tough hole to climb out of if you are the Mad Lions, but I guess it's not impossible. Crazier things have happened, but G2 is just one of those teams you do not want to go down 2-0 against. So credit to G2, honestly, a very similar game to game number one. The draft is still very eclectic. I would argue way more eclectic in game number two here. You've got the Kled, but this time going into the mid lane for Caps, you've got the Jarvan going support for Mickey X. We've seen this before. We've actually seen this a bit in the LCK as well. Not this year, but in the past. Um, and we've seen, obviously, Jarvan support a lot in the LEC be pulled out by teams like G2. And so, you know, I understand the thought process, especially with an AD carry that can really do a ridiculous ton of damage if you can get that engage and you can get that lockdown for her in the Samira. But on the side of Mad Lions, much more standard. You go for the Casio in the mid lane. It really worked out for the enemy team. So why wouldn't it work for you? But I bet they didn't know that they were going into the Kled. Uh, that was certainly not a matchup that I think Cassio would have taken on purpose. And then Varus Braum in the bot lane to play incredibly safe in the early game. Really don't like that decision because now how are you supposed to win? Like, where are you supposed to win through? Cassio's not going to win mid. Okay, bot lane's not going to win early because the Jarvan's going to execute so much pressure on that bot lane. You've got a Sejuani into Gragas, and so both of you are going to be trying to make plays early. And then a Fiora into Jax. That's a skill matchup, but for the most part, both just want to scale into the late game. So where exactly are you going to generate your leads early if you're Mad Lions? Well, it turns out nowhere, as G2 goes really early uh, aggro in this game. They try and push the tempo very quickly. They go for a 3v2 tower dive in the bot lane, and they do execute it really well. Niski does roam down and is able to pick up a revenge kill there. I think it's Mickey X that ends up dying, but... Still a two for one in favor of G2 with first blood is super favorable to them. And then the game just kind of devolves into action after action after action piece. And we get this big trade in the mid lane. We get Niski stepping up way too far, being caught out by Caps. And the Kled ultimate, he gets taken down. And then G2 try to push that advantage. And we see Hans and Mickey take a really good trade with Karzi and Hilly in the bot lane. They have to retreat fully. So Yike is heading down. He's going to try and dive them uh, under tier two tower. Unfortunately, they go way too deep and they end up trading zero for two. And, you know, some of the gold goes back to mad, but it doesn't really matter. Um, because it all leads to a pretty sensational 4v4 at like 9, 8 minutes into the game in the mid lane that just gets this Samira so far ahead. She's able to blow up basically everybody under mid lane tower. They're able to dive. I believe it's a, a 4 for 1, a 3 for 1, something like that. Something similar to that where Samira gets basically every bit of gold that she can. And then from that point on in the game, it's just the classic G2 strangling you out. It's very similar to game one in that sense where there were a couple of plays in the game where Mad felt like they were hanging tough, but one fight later and all of a sudden G2 is just able to completely strangle Mad Lions out of the game. Mad Lions typically great mid games just don't matter against a team like G2 who just push their advantages better than basically anybody in the league. My player of the game is going to go to Han Sama on this Samira. Really good performance coming out from him. Obviously a full dive comp here coming out from G2. You've got the Jax, you've got the Jarvan, you've got the Kled, you've got the Samira. When Gragas is your least dive-oriented champion, that is insane.
And uh, that really shows kind of the priority of what G2 wanted to go for in this game. And that just benefits Samira a ton. Obviously, this champion's been super busted in solo queue for quite a while on this patch that they are playing in the LEC. But uh, she's quite difficult to pull off at the pro level because you really have to go all in in order to make her work. Luckily, G2 was willing to be super aggressive, was willing to try and push that tempo, push the pace of the game to make sure that the Samira could get online. And Hansama played it beautifully. He absolutely deserves player of the game here. Other players you've got to shout out, of course, Mickey with a lot of those dives on the Jarvan. Some of them were good, some of them were bad. He ended up being the one to take the fall for G2 a lot of times, but for the most part was still really, really positive overall for the team. And the jungle mid duo for G2 was still fantastic in the series. Yike is sensational. He's able to completely dominate the jungle matchup again in terms of pressure. El Yoya had no shot getting out on the map towards the mid game here. Yike just did a great job of being able to take away any sort of avenue for him to be able to play the game just like he did in game number one. Honestly, Yike has looked so much better than El Yoya in this series and it's super impressive to see. Caps on the Kled was ridiculously aggressive, was able to pick up some solo kills in the top lane on Chasey, was just able to dive basically anybody in the game after he was able to generate some gold. Cap still looks like one of the best players in the entire world. Broken Blade was really good on the Jax, even if he wasn't super influential on the outcome of this game. Overall, G2 just looked unstoppable, and a lot of that was just due to their early lead that they were able to generate. As for Mad, it just feels like you're completely and utterly outclassed at this level. Like, I hate to say it, but... Watching Mad play into G2 just looks like G2 playing into a bad team. And it's crazy to say that because Mad is a good team. I picked them to win against Koi and they did beat Koi, a genuinely good team. But G2 is just so far ahead of everybody else in the LEC that it's actually insane. Watching players like El Yoya, players like Niski, players like uh, Chasey in the top lane who have been playing really well over the past few weeks just not even stand a chance against their counterparts on G2 is honestly incredibly impressive from G2. Uh, Niski's gonna get done of the game here. I felt like his positioning on the Casio simply had to be better. He was able to pull off a lot of kills towards the back half of the game to, you know, kind of revenge a lot of some of the plays that were made early, but he simply had to be a little bit better. He is the only hyper carry threat on the side of Mad Lions, especially when you've got this dive comp. And if you have a dive comp, you can't be the first target for Kled. Like, you can't be sitting on the midline. The Casio simply has to wait for the other team to make some decisions to invest on somebody, and then she can try and get her damage out. I'm not sure it would have changed much, but at the very least, that's what, I've, what I what I would have liked to see from Niski. El Yoya also had a really bad game. Karzi and Hilly got completely blown back in the 2v2, and Chasey was just destroyed in the mid game. He had absolutely no pressure on the Fiora. Could not side lane even a little bit. Everybody on Mad Loss. There really is a case to be made for everybody on the team to be dead of the game. El Yoya especially, but uh, for Mad, it's just, I, I don't really know. What do you adapt here? It feels like G2 can beat you with basically anything. They go for a super high risk, high reward comp, G2 that is, and they get it. They, like, they're just so mechanically talented that they're able to run away with the game. So for Mad, I don't really know what to tell you. Figure out what you are most comfortable on and just play that because that is the only shot you have right now is just to outplay them in some way, shape, or form. G2 might get a little bit overconfident. Hopefully, you can pull one game back. But for G2, God, you're just so dominant. You can, you can play basically anything, and you're going to be able to win on it right now. The confidence on this team is through the roof, clearly with this draft, and the execution is at a ridiculously high level. Even when they make small mistakes, like overdiving the Tier 2 tower in the bot lane, it doesn't matter because they're able to pull back the lead so easily and so efficiently with just a different play on the map. And so for G2, they just have to close things out now in three... And they probably are going to be able to do it, but um, we're going to have to see if they are. As we move into game number three here, it is win or go home. This is the finals. You either win it and you are champions or you lose it and you go on to a game four. So we'll see here as we move on to game number three. And the winner of game number three was... G2 Esports. They are able to take game number three and they're able to complete the sweep in the 2023 Winter Finals to win their 10th LEC trophy. An unreal run of dominance this split and just an LEC history coming out from G2. They are the Kings of Europe once again and they reign over everyone else. And this game was no exception. This was a really fun one. While games one and two were blowouts, I would say, in favor of G2. They definitely looked like the better team. Game three, very back and forth, mostly because of El Yoya, which we will get to in a bit. He had a phenomenal game for Mad Lions, but G2 is just too good, and they're able to capture the 2023 Winter Split title. But let's go ahead and talk about what happened in this game number three before we jump into, you know, the celebration of G2 here. Game number three 
was a little bit back and forth in the early game. In fact, it was back and forth for a lot of the game, but the early game was definitely a split map kind of scenario. G2 investing a lot into Hansama, into Mickey X, down into the bot lane, really trying to make sure that that bot lane can get ahead and can carry the game towards the back half, making sure that that Zeri doesn't get online nearly to the same level that the Sivir will in this game, whereas Mad Lions really wants to invest in topside. This is something that we've seen very consistently out of Mad Lions over the course of their playoff run. Chasey has been a huge point of power in the game for them, especially when they go for this Jace Grogus double flex that I guess isn't really a double flex. They have always played it like this with Jace in the top lane and Grogus in the mid lane, but drafting the Jace Grogus duo here, they have always wanted to invest into Chasey on this Jace, and they do so again in this game, and they do get Chasey relatively far ahead. El Yoya with some really good plays topside to get Chasey a couple of kills early on in the game, but G2 making some plays bot side as well to get Hansama and Mickey ahead early on in the game. And so we're at a little bit of a standstill. Chasey, you know, gets caught a little bit being too far forward, but uh, Caps gets dove towards the back half of the, you know, the, the mid game. And we're sitting at a state at around 20, 25 minutes where it is pretty dead even. Unfortunately, Mad tries to force a few too many plays that they can't exactly... I guess, pun like, contend on, and, and they end up losing a lot of that lead in the top lane in a fight that goes 4v2 in favor of G2 because they try and over-aggress for Caps, who had a fantastic game we'll get to in a bit, but that that's Mad Lions trying to make a play, and unfortunately, they're going just a tad bit too deep, and then we get to the late game where Karzi is super far behind, and G2 has a fed Sivir. From that point onwards in the game, G2 is just going to be able to win a lot of the team fights from that point onwards, and so credit to G2. They knew exactly what they needed to do. Credit to El Yoya, especially on the side of Mad Lions, knowing that he needed to generate a lead for top lane early, and credit to Chasey for being able to capitalize on that, but El Yoya also throughout all of the mid game, throughout all of the late game, was phenomenal. Let's talk about G2 first, because they were the ones who ended up winning the game and winning the series. My play Player of the game is going to go to Caps. I think you could very realistically give this to a few people, but I'm going to give it to Caps. His play on Talia was spectacular. Really, his only deaths were Mad Lions investing a ton to end up killing him in the end. Some acro plays that he was able to make on the Talia, being able to pick off Chasey in the top lane a couple of times. Super important. His team fight prowess on this champion, super important. Honestly, that W coming out from Talia throughout 90% of this game was a huge problem. Zeri can't dash it anymore. Gragas can't dash it anymore. Wukong can't dash it anymore without taking serious penalties and that Talia pick really coming in clutch. And Caps, I think, played it at a masterful level. He was phenomenal in the series. Pretty easy choice for player of the series here in the finals. My pick for the Winter Split Finals MVP. Not that that will really surprise anybody. The other players that you really have to shout out, Mickey X on this Heimerdinger. Some really aggressive plays, but some spectacular disengages coming out from the Heimerdinger. This champion can be super oppressive when you have to play into it at this level. Of course, putting a lot of pressure into that bot lane also helps out G2 a ton, but Mickey, I thought, played the mid to late game here basically perfectly. A really, really good game coming out from him, and of course, Hansama on the Sivir. You can invest as much as you want into that Sivir, into the bot side. The Sivir still has to play the game. and still has to be able to deal a ton of damage in the back half, and Hansama team fought better than anybody else in the entire series, and that's really what led to G2's win. Now, Broken Blade, a little bit of a question mark in the top lane. He was much better towards the back half of the game, but still made some weird plays. After Caps got caught, he ran into the enemy team trying to trade one back. Was not able to do that. A couple of weird int plays here or there was not a very good laning phase from him. But overall, I would say that everybody on G2 really held their own, especially when it mattered the most. Uh, big credit to all of G2, but Caps, Mickey especially, I think were phenomenal in this game. And then on the flip side for Mad Lions... Uh, credit to El Yoya. I mean, he might have just been the single best player in this game. Not only did he generate a huge lead for Chasey in the top lane, basically just through his macro play and through his decisions in the early game, uh, he also was the conduit for this team to be able to keep up in the mid game. A lot of plays being made, a lot of picks being made. He was even able to steal Baron when this team looked like they were completely dead in the water. Without El Yoya, this team would have collapsed and crumbled much earlier here in game number three, but luckily for them, he was spectacular here. Unfortunately for him, nobody else on the team really wanted to step up and play all that well towards the back half. Chasey was given a huge early lead, but his late game and his mid game decisions, his macro, his side lane pressure was not non-existent, especially compared to what Talia was able to offer on the other side, which is not good at all. 
Then you've got Niski on the Gragas. Some of those engages were just so poor. His micro mechanics in this game were really, really bad, and that was disappointing. And I don't even really have to tell you about Karzi and Hillis saying they got camped super hard in the early game. Karzi ends up being 0-5 by like 10 minutes into the game, and he is completely eliminated. It is a 4v5 from that point onwards. That's why Karzi is going to get my dead of the game here. It is, you know, a little bit up to G2 that Karzi had such a bad game, but his positioning in a lot of these early game skirmishes was so, so poor. He was trying to look for trades, and instead of getting trades, he ended up just trading his own life for nothing. And so Karzi and this bot lane for Mad Lions continues to honestly be a little bit of a hindrance for this team, kind of like it was throughout the entirety of the playoffs. We were talking about this in the Koi series, even in the SK series. It felt like Karzi and Hill saying, we're the worst bot lane in every single best of five that they played. And that carried over into this one. It just was not a very good showing from Karzi specifically in the playoffs. Hopefully he can level back up. I thought he was pretty good in the regular season. He definitely showed signs of improvement from his vitality days. But with him being super weak side for Mad Lions over the course of the playoffs, I don't think he reacted and uh, adapted to that very well. And I, I think this game was a great example of that. So it's unfortunate for Mad Lions, but your split comes to an end here. You won't have to wait long before you start playing games again. It's only one week off. Uh, for the LEC teams. They're, they're coming right back for spring split, so not a lot of time to make these extra decisions, but you definitely have a good idea of how you want to play the game, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. Unfortunately, it just seems like bot lane is not going to be super positive unless you invest resources into them, which can be fine, but it is something worth noting. Topside is very good. Chasey had a really good playoff run. He wasn't particularly good in this series, but you know, it's G2. I'm willing to give him a little bit of slack, and hopefully he can build upon what he was able to do against both SK and Koi and get to a point where he can become one of the league's best top laners. Elyoya and Niski are still very good as a duo, even if Niski didn't have a particularly good series here against G2. And so I still have a lot of faith in this mad team. They were able to make finals after all, and so I don't want to walk away here with doom and gloom, but overall there's still, uh, you know, some improvements I would say to be made moving into next split for mad, but that means we get to move on to talking about G2, and G2 are our 2023 Winter Split Champions. It's honestly really, really exciting for this G2 team. A lot of players on this team either looking for debuts or looking for bounce backs after rough 2022s, and it's really, really good to see this orc come through in the clutch. Obviously, Broken Blade, Caps, returning from last year, but remember, this G2 team didn't win summer last year. They weren't as dominant as people wanted them to be. Everybody, me included, thought they should have been the best team in Europe. They weren't able to complete on that potential, but in the, you know, the beginning of the season here, they're looking really, really good. Broken Blade, while he didn't have the best playoff run, was really, really good in the regular season. Obviously, we kind of know who he is as a player at this point, a really good aggressive top that is going to be able to generate leads on his own in the isolated 1v1s, can sometimes get a little bit over eager and get caught out by enemy junglers, but for the most part is a massive positive towards this team, just like he was last year. And of course, Caps is maybe the best player in the entire league. He really shows up when it matters the most. And the finals MVP is super deserved for him. He was fantastic in that series against Mad. He was really good all season long. And it really felt like every single time they gave him the keys to drive the car, he would knock it out of the park. When he was the carry of the game, it went super smoothly. So those two staying, definitely the right calls. But you're bringing in two bounce back candidates in the bot lane. Han Sama from Team Liquid, Mickey X from Excel, neither of which you had fantastic years in 2022. But both of them mesh incredibly well. It's like their time off of Misfits never happened. They came back and were excellent. Mickey in particular was maybe the best support in the entire region. But Hans, also one of the best AD carries. It was really great to see both of them play. And especially to see both of them get to play their style. Hans, very few games of Zeri. Very few games of Lucian. We didn't see a lot of meta coming out from Hans. We saw a lot of comfort, and it really worked out for G2, and Mickey was the same way. A lot of picks that, you know, a lot of other teams just wouldn't be able to pull off. The Talia in the support position. We saw Jarvan support in this series, in the finals, and so a lot of stuff that really opens up possibilities for G2. A really good series and a really good year split, I should say, for this bot lane. And then, of course, the rookie, Yike, who might just be the best performing jungler in the LEC right now in 2023. He was also spectacular in this series. Games one and two were basically won off the back of Yike generating so much pressure in that jungle matchup with just keeping El Yoya at bay. Really, really good year from everyone on G2, and now all of them have another ring or a ring to their name. Very, very proud of this team, and I'm just hoping that they're going to be able to keep it up. They have qualified for MSI at the very least as the two seed out of Europe, but, you know, with how they're playing right now, it is very likely this team runs it back in spring and is able to win that too. 
All right, but that is going to do it for my 2023 LEC Winter Split coverage. The finals are wrapped. G2 is your champion, and we got to get ready for Spring Split. It's coming up very shortly. Obviously, these videos are not going to stop. They're going to keep going all throughout the year. Spring Split coming up soon. I hope you guys are excited for that. If you are, let me know down in the comments section below. Do you think G2 is just going to run it back? Or do you think that some other teams who are making some changes are going to be a little bit more competitive? Let me know what you think about Fnatic's new roster. Let me know what you think about some of the changes Excel was able to make. You know, even Astralis going out and making some decisions. And so let me know what you guys think about all of those down in the comment section below. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It really does mean a lot, not only to let me know that you guys are enjoying the content that's being put out on this channel, but also so that this video can get out to a few more people. We put a lot of time and effort into these videos, and if you enjoy them, and if you want them to, you know, get spread out and hopefully get into more people's recommended, hit that like button. That simple task really does go a long way. Of course, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. It really does mean a lot to me, and of course, not only do we do LEC stuff on this channel, we do all four of the major regions, as well as NACL weekly coverage on this channel, so if you want a comprehensive guide and a comprehensive overview on everything going on in LOL Esports right now, go ahead and follow this channel. It's a one-stop shop, and I would really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, you're probably going to enjoy the rest of the content that I do. But of course, with all that being said, I hope you all are having a great day. I hope you continue to have a great day, and I will see you all later.